So yeah, just, I gotta let you know. I press the button. This yeah, time. but you always interrupt the conversation before that. Uh, whenever you hit the button, so this was totally fine. It's, you're okay. You know, you know what? You know what? Welcome to nobody's mad. Six, everyone, nobody's mad. Everyone, giving everyone's mad. <laughs> everyone's, 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 what? Everyone's what, what episode are we? On? Everyone's mad that Shadow of the Earth Tree got DLC Three. game with the. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're gonna get there. We <laughs> are gonna get there. We're gonna get there. That is number one. It's called a teaser, guys. I just. So wait, yeah. What what episode are we on? Sixty three. Sixty three. Oh, I'm waiting for sixty nine. Oh, sorry. I'm just gonna five year old. It's gonna be next year's episode. An adult's body. (laughs) (laughs) Man, what's going on? What are you munching on over there? I did not have lunch yet. Um, I didn't eat anything yet, actually, for the whole day. Mm-hmm. So I'm having some sweet and sour chicken with rice. Mm-hmm. This is the first time I actually introduced Camille first. I, I know. Really. Yeah, that's, that's weird, about time. Eh? Yeah, we got to change that up. Oh, that's not. Be a good podcast. <laughs> that can't, that can't be uh, happening uh, again. Let me just, let me just yeah, do that. There we go. go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> you Ra- what I mean. Riley, what's going on? Not much, man. Uh, we're loading up Black Friday stuff, which is fun. So a lot of that going on right now, and then Pokemon Pocket, and now I feel like I have to play Bellatro. Oh, yeah, that's how I it's know. Right? I have it on the Switch. I can't. I, can't. I can't. I have Snap, and now I got Pokemon Pocket. You're telling me there's another card game out there I got to invest my time into? Like, yeah, but this it, one's a one-time purchase. But yeah. I can't. But I can't. <laughs> I mean, hey, at least we know your addiction is card games. It's fine. It, it really is. And this one's past. Canadian as well. Would you not? And, and it's and it's no. scary. Yeah. And it's scary because Magic the Gathering is doing like Marvel stuff I now. Know. No. I'm and really it's like, my that is not like, nice. My you know inner what? circle is like starting to play a lot more of Magic now, and I'm scared. just like, I need to jump mm-hmm. in at some point. I'm scared. I will <laughs> say though, I do like the card game renaissance that's happening right now. Like, yes, yeah. I feel like all of us gamers that maybe parted ways with our card game ways when we were younger are like back into action. A lot to do with Pokemon for me, especially. Um, but it's just like card games for the win. I love it. It's okay. great. Okay, you guys were supposed to be excited when I said that. Oh, I thought no, there was no, more. No, I thought it was like, no, yeah, yeah. I didn't know. I didn't expect Our you to just win. end it right there at that point there. I want well, like that a big two cheer, game we're to come all... back. I don't know if you played Big Two during high school. Oh, I my want, God. Like, I used to play Big, big two. two all the time. Um, if that came like a mobile game, so I'll make a mobile, like, oh, it would be game over. Game over. <laughs> I used to get a lot of lunch money for Big Two. Oh, I wouldn't gamble. I didn't say anything about gambling. I just thought I got lunch money for it. Hey, Bruce, what's going on? Not much uh, <laughs> outside of being addicted to Pokemon Pocket and Marvel Snap and potentially Bellatro eventually. Um, I think you're done with yeah, it right t- now, are you not? <laughs> today, today, I feel like is going to... Well, actually, I you know, if Steve McVary was on the panel today, I feel like it definitely would be one of the most controversial episodes. Um, mm-hmm. as I believe he's got certain opinions about uh what we're gonna talk about, but today's gonna be an, an interesting episode. For a second there, I thought I was gonna be offended by when you say I wish we had Steve Vigvari because I was like, wait a second. I wish we had the other Steve, but I'm like, yeah. 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 I guess we yeah. have Steve yeah. Sailor. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I don't know yeah. why yeah. that went through my head. Yeah. I was just like, wait a second, Aaron. I thought we were friends. I wish we had the Steve who <laughs> wasn't nominated. That would have been great, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, get what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now that's you know, Give me words that nominated Steve. What's going on? I, I, okay, okay, all right. So Woo! It, it's okay. I, I did this as it, like changed my name as as as, as more of a joke because I'm not I'm not specifically nope, nominated. It's just you. If you better uh, go on stage when you win, just letting you know. But uh, I am very happy that the game Steve I've been working on uh, is. is uh, words, that oh God, no! I hope that I no, 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 no. Let me get on. <laughs> um, and I don't even think I would ever be like, even if like I, my game did win, I don't think I would ever be really allowed to even go up on stage. Like that's something I'm like I. If I win, I like unless I'm told I, I'm allowed to. I'm allowed to. I ain't going up on that stage. I ain't gonna get let security basically be on my ass and then Jeff Keeley oh, ban not? me from the Game Awards forever. 
You're so right. about Bill Clinton or whatever it is, the one guy did. Yeah. It well, it makes sense story. because Black Ops Six has Bill Clinton in it, so that, <laughs> like, that would have felt kind of better. The irony of that is sense. hilarious. That's I think hilarious. if uh, you know what, I think I probably if there like, and this is a big sort of like if like a like a less than five percent chance of this, I do get up on stage. I should probably think of a joke that includes Bill Clinton because that would be hilarious. Anyway, um, yeah, so that, the game I've been working on for the past three years <laughs> is nominated for Accessibility Award at the Game Awards. Amazing. Let's go. Yeah. Oh. It's just amazing that it's a Call of Duty game. Like, I know. that's amazing, Steve. I know. The first Call of Duty mm-hmm. game to really focus on accessibility, and it, get, and it got nominated. Uh, so uh, it's got amazing. some very amazing company, too. Like, uh, basically, I always say this, but it, it always is true. Every single game deserves to be nominated on like every, every single game that is nominated deserves to win hands down. They've a lot of people put a lot of effort into the, the games that are nominated this year for accessibility. And I would be I was I, I, I will scream just as loudly uh, for any of the games that they, uh, that win just as much as I would scream if, if uh, Black Ops six. Wins. So anyway, hi, awesome. I'm doing I'm awesome. doing well. I just finished Lego Horizons, actually, uh, just nice. before jumping on here. Nice. nice. Also. Did we introduce Riley yet? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right uh, I, I, oh, I, like, oh, right. I like anything Riley says out of my, my head. Anyways. Yeah. Caboose. That's why I like making excuses for forgetting things, too. <laughs> Before we get into it, <laughs> so, uh, Caboose, you didn't add me yet on Pokemon Pocket. I totally did. I no, it's class. not showing. And also, Marcel's playing while we're on this podcast. It says you're I'm currently not. logged in. What are you doing? I'm not even, my phone's down it here. It says you're currently... Currently. Wow, he just turned wow, it off. Dude. He just turned it wow. off. Wow. Yeah, wow. Okay. Wow. wow, that guy's so logged in right now. So how would you know that if you're logged in? Ooh. Well, I didn't deny it. I wasn't playing. We got we got multiple <laughs> people on the, the panel playing I'm Pokemon Pocket. By the way, you know what you cannot play right now? Microsoft Flight Sim because the servers are absolutely <laughs> destroyed. <laughs> Thanks, huh? The whole entire the, the game is roasted, cloud-based. toasted, scorched, and torched right now. And, and then when you log into the game, it's all cloud based. So like from like the aircrafts to like the um the locations. So it's, and like everyone's it's hammered right now. You Ooh. can't even log in like whatsoever. It Riley, I can't cloud-based. remember. Were you on the last episode of the podcast? No, I wasn't on the last Oh, one. so you missed this. Okay. Just I, I saw I actually was going through uh my friends list and I saw your thing. I liked it. Did you get a Charizard or is that a Dragon Knight? I can't see. That's Charizard. Charizard. That's Charizard. But I did go- get a it's the Golden Knight. God Charizard. It, I did get. I'm this so is, jelly. This is the only good pull I've gotten in the last while. I got this guy. I did get this guy. Actually, no. Oh, wait, sorry, I take it back. Say? I did pull a slow poke this morning. Okay. What was? What is everyone's like? I know because I missed the the episode. But what is everyone's like most prized possession card right now that they my, have? My the my crown, gr- crown rare uh, Charizard for sure that I just yeah, showed. Yeah, crown my rare. full art, uh, animated art uh, Charizard as well. Misty because she gets me a lot of Which, wigs. By the way, Steve, <laughs> I did not realize you pulled that while we were like all hanging yeah. out because I yeah. wasn't aware of like what these cards are. Oh, you have a crown rare. Yeah. Oh, nice. So that's cool. Yeah, that's a crown rare. That's beauty, my prize beauty. possession. There you go. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. I'm holding. I can't it. even believe this. I love the fact this, you were trying to play the game until we're like, are you going to add us or one. what? <laughs> no, I was playing that's my the game favorite one. Then. I just forgot. So to you, add didn't want, you just didn't so want to be our friends. I see. How no. It is. Oh, that's pretty. I was focused on the Lapras event and like trying to finish all the solos. So I was like, I got to like not talk to my friends, even though it hurt wow. me on the Wonder Pricks. But I just need to focus on the events. And I did every mission in the Lapras mm-hmm. event. I was so. And that's the thing. OK, like I know you guys talked about Pokemon Pocket, but. We're going to talk about it again because I am. We're One of these things. That rose pretty good for me. That's, oh, that's sweet. I've got the Pikachu. Mewtwo. I don't have the Mewtwo. I got two Pikachus, two Mewtwo's. And I like I was I feel like I was just pulling dog water. Yeah. And I was like, carry here. Give it a go. She pulls uh, the illustration Mewtwo. I'm like, all right. So now I have two of those. So that's nice. Wow. Yeah. But see, my thing, it's like. I don't know about you guys with the Lapras event. I found the missions that they have it. Like, they're actually challenging. They don't seem like they're, like, uh, crazy missions that you can't reach. But they're challenging. And, like, it really drove me to, like, want to beat each mission. Whether it was making a deck with, like, one to three diamond rarity or whatever that mission was. Right? Like, I actually find how they've 
they spanned out this event, especially. That's and, a regular like, solo, not Lapras. Brought, you keep saying Lapras. So <laughs> no, not the not this event, not the battle event. Now I'm actually talking about the Lapras event, the solo event that just passed. Yeah, the regular solo event, but you didn't need to use like a diamond for the Lapras one. Yeah, you did. No, that's the, the Lapras? Stand, that's a standard oh. solo. Yeah. Okay, well the standard solo. Yeah. <laughs> but I do mm. find that they have um, they've been like doing those missions I want to like mm. have more of that um, and hopefully they release more decks where it brings that I Denary. think that was so much fun I think that's what they were planning on doing uh, yeah. right. new, new decks are coming on January so get ready nice. yeah. decks are uh, there's uh, new cards dropping in December yeah. oh, this is, I thought yeah. it was January trading, oh. the trading is a new expansion oh. in January. Or no, the trade that's right the trading's in January the new decks are in December you're right oh then there we go better. Oh. So we're, you guys better be so, saving up your hourglasses yeah you gotta get Don't so apparently them. apparently there's a another event coming up a fire event <laughs> where you can put like pull uh, Arcanine EX the other yeah. fire, oh my gosh the I need Arcanine EX and then uh, they have another event coming up for Venusaur similar to the Lapras one where you can get you some get, like, promo a packs Venusaur, right? Venusaur, yeah, which is really nice. And there's still a Mewtwo in the game that we're not sure how we're going to get. I think it's earned through a challenge somehow. Mm. Yeah, you're still collecting also. I forgot what the item is. There's an item that it's a type of ticket. I think it's a, is it a type of ticket? It may be that you don't know what it does yet. Mm. Like You it know what I could lose mention? Is it? Earlier? Is it the one you mentioned, Kubus? Wait, which one? The ticket, the black, the golden ticket. No, those those the tickets, ticket. those tickets, tickets you, know you just get do. by trading They're from in your dupes for three hundred tickets or something. Yeah, three hundred yeah. shop tickets yeah. for one special yeah. shop ticket. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you're yeah. opening a lot of packs, and let's mm -hmm. say like for me, I had like several uh, like Charmanders. I had a bunch of Pinsiers. So I was yeah. just like, okay, like, what do I do with this many outside of just holding on to them? I guess for trading, and it turns out like you can trade them in for for special shop tickets. Anyways, Pokemon Pocket nominated for best mobile game. I think it was. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I do want to. I do want to mention there is an award show that everyone is really happy about. That yes. and that's the Indie Game Award Show that our yes. own Steve ah. Saylor is a part of the jury. Yeah, and I said yeah. hi. Another friend of ours as well. Love it. So. Great yeah, stuff. yeah. No, I've uh, Mike uh, Tandra over at uh, Six One Indie uh, reached out and uh, asked if I could basically be a, a judge. Uh, for or uh, for the for the, the indie game awards and uh, yeah, so I'm gonna be sort of specifically. I, I don't know if it's gonna expand beyond like just beyond just the main categories or if it is just only just accessibility category. But uh, um, yeah, I was uh, I was asked to do that. I'm, I'm very honored uh, based on two juries this year for uh, yeah. awesome yeah. awards. Latro awesome. Zonder as well. I see. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, it's the advanced ticket. That's what it, this this thing. I the advanced ticket. We don't know what it does yet. So like, oh. there's mm -hmm. secrets out there. I have one already. I don't know if I have any. I, I barely touched like the the Lapras event. I, I did sort of, but it was like I didn't finish. I don't think I finished any of the, like or like all the challenges as of yet. So, um, but um, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of taking it slow. I'm 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 trying to not get like super addicted right at the moment. Um, because I know myself and I will get dive in and you'll never see me again. Uh, but uh, uh, so I'm really trying to hold back. I mean, we were supposed to talk Steve, about where'd you go? on this podcast, and we started talking about Pokemon Steve. Pocket, and we're already like in deep it's in the episode. So a... I get it, Steve. Get yeah, it, Steve. Your, this is your fault, Camille. You Where's know. that advanced ticket? How do I find? So that? if you go to your profile, <laughs> like just start so okay, already, Camille. If you, if you go to, <laughs> if you go to your oh crap, what what did I just do? If you go okay. You go to your home and then you click like the three button. Can you see that? The, yeah, the button. Thing? The three yeah. the three button in the bottom right. Items. You go to items. Mm -hmm. and you'll see all your items and then you oh. see advanced ticket and you, it'll, it'll tell you what oh. each item does. I oh I do have so an advanced much, ticket yes guys I really think we should get to the game award <laughs> moment <laughs> <laughs> the game awards I know I was upset about it I <laughs> was happy. we do have a gaming yeah, podcast we have a gaming right? podcast here it's not Pokemon anymore you know I have ten thousand um, shine dice wow. <laughs> anyway sorry no one is on the phone anymore you're all banned on your phone I can't come off come off come off come off hands up hands up hands up I'm about to download that ad that plays Jokes on you, I've got a smartwatch. He <laughs> <laughs> uh, just start playing with his. Can you imagine? Oh my gosh. Uh, Honestly, okay. that would be pretty cool. That would they be dope if you could that. swipe like through the cards like on your yeah. watch. Oh. Why can't you? They need to nope, do that. Nope. Elden Ring. 
Sorry. Elden Ring. <laughs> what's, mm-hmm. what's going on? Everyone, what, what do we think about the Game Award nominations, folks? Game so of the Year, Elden with Ring. The big one? That, Game of the Year? Esports stuff. I don't think it's any surprise. If, you, if, you, if any of y'all watch, uh, watch or listen to this, so you probably had heard about at least the, the nominations, or at least the game, like the game of the year nominations. But I mean, we yeah, could so Astrobot, right. Blatro, Black Myth, Wukong, Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earth Tree, Final Fantasy VII, Rebirth, and Metaphor Re Fantasio. Who we? Like, I, I just, DLC I don't know. And like, just make it their own category. Listen, just, this is calm mm, the storm. I just, uh, this totally feels like a, just, I feel like, like a, a, like a weird story, <laughs> you know, from the game. Yeah. Because even like Jeff had to be very careful when they announced game of the year, he was like, I'm not on the voting committee, guys. It yeah, wasn't me. Come after me. We, like, yeah, you know, yeah. he's wearing the hot dog suit. We're all trying to figure out who did this, guys. <laughs> like, no, seriously, like I, I understand that he, he it, it might not have been entirely up to him, right? There is a voting committee. Oh no, he he, he like even on so adds someone on uh, have been on the jury for for the past couple of years. He does not vote. He does not nominate. He does not suggest any anything yes. to anybody. He is very much like he's very much extremely hands off when it comes to the voting and nomination process. But now, but now, if somebody, but but the, at, at some point along the lines, this the I don't know the the, the behind the scenes work of it, right? Steve, right. You might be able to answer this better, but somewhere along the lines, somebody had to have suggested, "Hey, I personally think Shadow of the Earth Tree is Game of the Year." Is that allowed? And other I, people you know, had to. Had there there to had to have been a conversation think, that inevitably goes to Jeff Keeley for him to say, you know, I think it's fair. I don't right? think that it necessarily that people were saying specifically Shadow of the Earth Tree, but I think people, uh, it, he might have gotten the idea that, oh, DLC, like he gets a question every year is DLC or expansions. Is that it, it, will that ever be included as as potential uh, like like especially I think it was like it started with the remakes and the remasters like would they be eligible and then they started being added in and then that that now expanded out to DLCs I think the only thing that I am actually actively against like regardless of kind of what people think of whether this like a DLC should be nominated or not the one bit of wording that I that they said in the FAQ that I am actually actively against that they should include and I'm thankfully I don't think they did they none of none were nominated this year but when he's when when it's mentioned specifically game seasons seasons are a limited time only thing if you miss a season you can't play it period DLC is a little different DLC you yes you do have to have the base game and you have to be able to have purchased an additional uh, cost in order to be able to get the new DLC but yep. that's yours it is yours to play as you see fit but a game season is only for a limited period of time it, within that year and that should not be nominated imagine, in any category can you imagine they imagine nominate the last it. season of Fortnite for like some sort of category and it's like, well, it's like was oh a wow the last seasonal season? content like 100%. It, exactly right and i think that that's i think that's the problem that, that that arises for me when it comes to shadow of the year tree's nomination for game of the year is there is enough room to just make it its own category and yeah. listen if the conversation surrounding this would be that it, it wasn't as insane of a year as last year was for games right where where you can look at the nominees for game of the year and you could understand anybody's argument for picking any single one of them as their personal game of the year right last year was super competitive this year you can debate is not as crazy right there are still some great great games that have come out and there are plenty of amazing nominees for game of the year but i really do think there are a few games that really are are full games, AAA titles that are more deserving of that slot over a DLC expansion. If this yes. was like the if this was like so, the fighting game category, where like you literally have Marvel vs. Capcom, yeah, yeah. Like, well, like that's okay, that's a, wild to me. But, but okay, insane. like I totally I I agree that it should be a separate category, and I think potentially why it probably was not is because it wasn't a category that was. Um, developed prior to the judging phase it probably came up later on in the judging phase which is probably why they didn't make it its own category given that as well we have to think of destiny that with its updates 
has been nominated. Like, this isn't the Shadow of the Earth Tree is not the first situation of, yes, specifically Game of the Year, but being nominated in a category that's for a game, but it's a Destiny like update or DLC, right? But what am I going on? Has, 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 yeah, on? has Destiny ever been nominated for anything outside of just the best ongoing well, yeah, or the best I, uh, best support? ongoing, best community support, best multiplayer? Yeah, that should but, be fair to, for for the games to be you know consistently but, nominated. And I'm all but for like a, is, like a like, remake what, getting nominated well, too, just to clarify. Well, yeah, yeah, like, like Resident Evil was nominated last year. From the ground up, a brand new game. Like that's okay. That's no, that's but totally my thing is me. like when you look at hi Emily, uh, when you look through <laughs> the, the games, right, uh, and each category, we're looking at so like the Game Awards. It's supposed to represent games that came out in twenty twenty four, unless the category specifies otherwise, which would be like ongoing game. If they were to do a seasonal a DLC, which I do think, and I agree with you, Caboose, I do think that they should. However, I think the reason why I'm not too like upset about this is because i recognize that you know through organizing these things sometimes there is not it should have been discussed but it wasn't and maybe because judging for this already happened when they reached the game of the year and they're like oh crap does a dlc count and maybe it's a situation where it's like well we can't add a new category because we've already judged all these other games and potentially dlcs in separate categories that would have otherwise qualified for this new category. So I, I think do no, think I, in you're, the you're future, saying you're saying all the right things. The, I Sorry, do think in the future that we could potentially see a DLC category, and I do think remake as well should be a separate category. I don't think remakes should be considered in game of the year. Um, it could get a little bit cloudy there because of how something like Final Fantasy's Seven Rebirth is so different than the original in terms of like, and also just how many how remakes are coming out per year. Well, that's year. a retelling as well. And I mean, how, that, that's 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 it makes sense because Resident Evil Four was nominated that's, last year. Caboose, yeah. but that's the thing too, right? How many remakes are coming out in a year? How many notable DLCs would be totally. in that discussion, right? But totally. I do think there for DLCs, and I think seasonal is a good idea as well, um, Steve. Um, there is room to create those categories, and I do think we'll see that in the future. I think it's something where the judging process probably didn't allow for it to happen because this i would hope this came up as a later issue when they got to that category you're, you're saying all the right things i totally agree with you you know especially on the front of okay well maybe there aren't going to be enough dlcs that come out in a year to justify a category even being made and if a category is made on the year that there are enough dlcs how are we to know that next year there will be enough right here's That's the thing totally fair um, but sorry, I, I'll let you get yeah, to sorry. it. Yeah, go, 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 go. Because for me, it's like if that's not the case, then too bad, so sad. You know what I mean? Like, just, no, no, we can't make a category then. And then, okay, Shadow of the Orchard cannot be nominated. There are plenty of amazing games yeah. a, and an indie game that really should have gotten the spotlight and had the opportunity to. But get snubbed over an expansion. I know Shadow of the Archery is more than just your ten dollar. It's more than like Chaos Reigns in Mortal Kombat One, right? Yeah. It is not just a two hour story, and that's it. There is a lot of content there, and some people have argued that it's enough content to justify it being a full priced game in its own right. Okay, yeah. I get that, but it's not. It's a DLC expansion. You need to, from my understanding, from other players who have told me, play through plenty of Elden Ring's base game in order to be able to access shadow of the earth tree uh, and at that point you are now only able to play this expansion through playing the base game and the base game was already nominated for and won game of the year it yeah. is the game has received its flowers it is it has taken that spotlight rightfully so and now games like animal well Games yeah. like Helldivers, mm -hmm. Prince of Persia, mm -hmm. all these incredible titles that released this year that are so deserving of this Game of the Year spot have now been set aside for a DLC. It's well, a that's DLC. The, I, think, I think that's the hurtful thing. I think, and it's unfortunate because if, you know, Shadow of the Earth Tree actually wins, I do think the reaction will be taken away. That moment will be taken away from the developers and the team yeah. that worked really hard on that DLC. Um, because of the controversy yes. with this category, that that is it means the game won me twice is, in this uh, within the span of three years. But that's the thing. Where the same it's game. Like, 
I think that is like the unfortunate thing with this mess. And that's why I definitely think next year, there's no way to rectify this this year because the judging already has happened. But I do think next year, they should add a DLC category because also to what you were saying, Caboose, it encourages game developers to aspire to bring out DLC that is high quality. That's true. That is. Uh, here's yeah. it, here's a question, and this is not meant as a, as, as a gotcha in any way. D if if Cyberpunk Liberty City, would that could that have been not should uh, could, should and could have th that have been nominated for Game of the Year uh, last year? Under the logic of this year, it yes. could have been. But yeah, okay. I mean, I think the year that it come out was was a lot more of a stacked year, right? So I think. Part of the problem is, is that it, it feels like we kind of discussed it or where that it feels like that it should have its own category, which I agree. Technically, all they need to do is rebrand one of the categories best ongoing game because Cyberpunk won that last year with a DLC. No, you can't. You cannot add a DLC DLC content to best ongoing game. Because but they did that. But, but they I, did, I, and I they won. No, but I'm saying, I'm saying to what you're saying, um, Steve. Like, with, with like, wait, were they not best ongoing game this year as well in that category? Not, no. not Cyberpunk, which is oh, so no, I mean, not not I mean, Shadow, Shadow of the Earth Tree. Tree. No. It's not, which is no, so, not, weird. Yeah. Is so weird. Is so it, weird. weird. Under that logic of last year, it that would have been the category that it would have been in. But no, but no, it was basically got pushed into the game of the year category. And this is this is what's bothering me about mm -hmm. the game awards. I really do love it as a time of year for us to celebrate video games for everyone in the community to come together. We you know we get to network and see so many friends and see so many people in the industry and meet people in the industry. It is an amazing time of year. It really is video game Christmas, right? But Jeff Keeley and a lot of people want the gaming industry to be taken seriously and they want this show to be the video game oscars you yeah. need to have a level of legitimacy it, it cannot be uh, like unorganized it cannot be out of whack the way that it has been in the last three years you cannot have something like cyberpunk phantom liberty be nominated for best ongoing game as it's a dlc and then the following year, when you have a DLC in Shadow of the Earth Tree, it doesn't get nominated for best ongoing game. So it weirdly ongoing. doesn't. It doesn't classify <laughs> so under the category. By definition, it wouldn't qualify though. So best ongoing game is awarded to a game for outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves the player experience over time. So when you're looking at what has Cyberpunk 2, done though that's different from from so from Cyberpunk, yeah. it's still a world. Well, I guess like Shadow of the Earth Tree because it is more story heavy, story driven. Same with Liberty City. There was Liberty City. Liberty City yeah. was an entire well, story. Well, was a whole the games that are you, nominated uh, this year. And you have so to Destiny add, 2, Diablo yeah. 4, uh, yeah. Fortnite. Do, yeah, Fortnite, Fortnite Final yeah. Fantasy, Hell Divers 2. Those are all games to me that it's like people will be jumping like i don't know how to explain this is it, this is the problem that i had you're you're right this was the problem that i had yes it is a particular category yeah, I totally this was saying. my problem with why sure. cyberpunk yes. should not have won yes because of that very same reason you're saying because yeah. it did not like yes yeah. in the definition of the category it like it expands the game beyond what it originally was like that yes that the liberty city did that shadow of the earth tree did that but to, to like it's weird because there's like several categories that kind of the Venn diagram of each other yeah. kind of blend a little too much. Like best action adventure and best action g a game, kind of almost the same thing. It, 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 no one seems to kind of like. It, I like, don't uh, agree though. I don't agree. Best action. It's adventure the same. It, it, it's, it's, it's best action. So when I think best action adventure, I think of like The Last of Us, like very story driven, very much more linear. Best action adventure doesn't necessarily have to be linear. But that's not does the definition of what an action adventure game it like is. So how do they define how does the game awards define it? So best action game is defined as the best game in action genre focused primarily on combat, whereas the best action adventure is the best action adventure game combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving. See, and that's See, what I think traversal and puzzle solving loophole there is it, that, that that's that's why I'm saying the Venn diagram of the two categories. The fact that it's only those two things is what separates it. It's too close together. 
that essentially that it, like it, like you could combine the categories or get rid of one like one and and one one wouldn't be missed. Like you're you're absolutely. Right. I think it's it's kind of in that. It's but it grown would be a little missed. Like you beyond. look at best action adventure, Steve. Right? Look at the games: Astrobot, Prince of Persia, Silent Hill Two, Star Wars Outlaws, which debatable, and The Legend of Zelda: Echoes of Wisdom. Then you look at best action game, right? And I'm pulling it up. Sorry, 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 sorry. Best action game. So you have Black Myth Wukong, Call of Duty Black Ops 6, Helldivers 2, Stellar Blade, Warhammer. Those are a, those are two right. tiers of very different but they, games. You could argue about with the same the same thing with the action adventure. Does it, like, does Stellar Blade have puzzles? Yes, it does. Like it has, it, it like right. it also has good combat. Yes, it does. But, like, but it, it's mostly you, you focused know, on combat. You know, when you, think you know what's the happy medium? It's mostly combat. You know what's the happy it's medium? Tough. How many how many games can be nominated for a category? Five. That's Only the five. Max, that's the max the that the jury is the allowed to suggest. Six? Because game direction has six. So it, the The problem is, is that so. There are certain categories that are six. Yes, yeah, right. like, like for a direction game year, and for game, game of the year. Do you mean how many? Sorry, do you mean how many? Like one time? Like, wait, no, 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 no. Just in, in like in category. one category. In oh, one yeah. category. So the way that the way that it works from the jury side is that we get a a, a list with the ballot, and that we're supposed to when we're suggesting for nominations, they say that we, you can is you can nominate up to five games. Yeah. Um, and, and, the, and specifically the accessibility category. We're told that we're not allowed to, to nominate games that we worked on. So the games that I submitted are not games that I worked on, but I see. they'd equal up to five. The problem with expanding it to six or, or beyond that is that there, what, there are going to be years where there may not be enough games to fill that category to fill up five nominations. Okay. So so here's what I'm wondering. What? Um, is, Wait, what, what, is, is, what, is, what is that? What is I that, don't know. Riley? The nominees for Game of the Year. Oh yeah! yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, so look at the so cool what, photo I made, guys. Yeah. What's uh, what, what I'm wondering is, or, or a happy meeting that I feel like we could we could try to reach to to allow for, <coughs> like what you're saying, Steve, uh, 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 to remove certain weird uh, categories that that overlap with others. What if it were up to ten? You know, you you don't necessarily have. That's 10 a lot, nominees, though. That's a lot. But, but hold on, That's but you don't lot. necessarily have ten nominees. You just have up to ten nominees. Because I believe for the Oscars for for Best Picture, it is up to ten films. It it doesn't often reach that amount because they are they, they want Best Picture to be like the most prestigious of the year. But I believe there are up to ten nominees that can be selected, yeah. and I feel like. If let's say we looked at best action and best action adventure as an example, mm. there are a couple of games that overlap there where I feel like we could reach uh, just make one full action adventure category with maybe nine nominees or something, but and that way you... we don't have to have two two categories that overlap. But okay, another. out of the action adventure category and the action category, two games that you've picked. It is so hard, I think, for some of those titles, like Astrobot, to go against Stellar like Blade or Hell Divers, too. Or yeah. they are so different that putting them in a category now, making it ten nominations, I don't think actually does that category a service. But also, like, if you think about it, okay, so we want, like, you're, you're saying using Astrobot. I'm not disagreeing with you, by the way. I'm just sort of expanding yeah, yeah, yeah. beyond it. So when you take a look at Astrobot. And you say, okay, yeah, it, 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 like you put it into the action adventure category, and then you say, okay, put it up against like a Call of Duty or a Stellar Blade or whatever. Y like, uh, yeah, it does not really like stand a chance. But also, is like as well, does Astrobot necessarily like does that fully fit the action adventure like genre? I would definitely argue that it does, but it could also fit in family. It could also fit into platforming. It could also fit into game. Like, there's a lot of other different categories that a lot of these games sort of fit. And and the thing with the with the game wars, I think it's sort of it's it's grown be like the the way the games industry is. It's grown beyond the bounds of what the game awards is trying like is trying to be able to con to confine it's basically like it's trying to be able to say that these are the absolute best games of the year but it's trying to like trying to include all the other things that are beyond its boundaries like dlc new mm -hmm. seasons new content which is the norm for games nowadays and unfortunately like it's either a 
Jeff is not being flexible enough uh, and and basically like not willing to be able to increase or decrease or combine categories and being a, a little bit uh, more flexible that way. Or he just did, like he just doesn't want to uh, like he, he just thinks like, no, this is kind of like where where everything should be. And this is like we're trying to be able to keep it consistent year over year. And, and, and as you say, like kind of create sort of like the definitive categories like the Oscars are because the Oscars. They don't change your categories. No. They may add one or two new ones, depending on like, the, uh, like I think they added the the best sort of audience vote, which was for to kind of include blockbuster movies, uh, for uh, like because they never seem to be nominated. But yeah. they're very slow to add new categories, and I but, think that that is that is kind of Jeff's sort of thing is that he's he's not fast enough to be able to react to the game industry, and he's not or he's not flexible enough in order to be able to to change how these categories are year over year. Well, I think that's a good point, right? Like, you brought up the Oscars, and you and Caboose use the example of the Oscars. The Oscars, I think, has done a terrible job because they are slow to add categories, right? Where I feel like their categories are so traditional, and just how media evolves, and how, you know, you have video game movies, um, a lot debatable this year in terms of if they're good or not. Um, probably not. Uh, but you have them that like those blockbuster hits are not seen as like good films to, you know, the people that are on the jury that says what film is. Whereas like, I think you do need more categories in order to fit in genres like blockbuster and stuff like that. Right. And like, I, I don't, like something like action adventure, which I think is also debatable, debatable. And it's great that we're all having these conversations about it because it shows that like we care about what does game, the, the game awards mean and having that title of best game in what cat, you know, blank category. Yeah. But it's, it's, it, it's tough. I think that's yeah. why like awards is tough at the end of the day. It's a tough decision to make. And, you know, if you're backing out on some of these categories, you aren't giving something so like Silent Hill 2, which a lot of people, some of the best games, I don't think, again, compares to something like Black Ops, right? Um, or Helldivers. It's just two different games. It's like, how do you categorize, categorize these games in a industry now where different um, categories of games yep. are, are just o- overlapping all the yeah. time? Like it's every right. game is trying there's, to be able to be a multi-genre uh, type game in order there, to be able to be different. There's certainly a larger conversation to have when it comes to reboots or remakes, right? Like in the case of Silent Hill 2, it is weird for it to be nominated, I think, for Best Narrative. Mm-hmm. Um, when it's like, yeah. it's the, it's the, the original Same game. Silent Hill yeah. 2. Same game. Um, yeah. but, but when it comes to gameplay, when it comes to atmosphere, obviously visuals, there is a lot about Silent Hill 2 Remake that you can say, oh, this feels like it's a new game when yeah. I'm playing mm-hmm. it. Um, I think, though, in the case of a DLC, while you can still make that argument, and I totally understand why you would, it just doesn't sit well with me. For so, okay. I think, but I, to I your think point, Caboose. That game of the year slot, you know? But yeah. Caboose, you just said, right? Like, you know, being nominated for story, it, it's the same game, right? So yeah. if you were to have a remake category, you know, I know you're talking about DLC, yes. but a remake category, does that now make, if Silent Hill, technically a remake, does that mean it cannot be nominated for the other categories? Right? Like, that's also the dis- part of so. the discussion, not, too, not necessarily. right? Not yeah. best uh, A best foreign film I think we sort of think will be nominated for best picture, right? Like, I, yes, but, listen, but, but then about, that's the thing. The Can the it day, be nominated for Game of the Year, even at, though it has its category at, of... At the end of the day, outside of the talk of categories, making new categories, removing old categories, I think it, it really is a damn shame that yeah. those games that I had mentioned, whether it's Prince of Persia, Hell Divers, whether it's uh, an indie game out there, uh, Animal Well, getting a 90 meta score or Metacritic score, like these games that are well regarded, well reviewed, games that really should have that time to shine. It's a, a damn shame that Elden yeah. Ring's DLC expansion. Yeah. Takes I think spot. here's I think here's the thing, and 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 beyond kind of like the 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 rumors or whatever the theories. Even you, Marcel, brought it up about like is this sort of uh, Jeff kind of uh, making <laughs> making good for uh, for yes. the folks at From Software? Yeah. I think if 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 Shadow of the Earth Tree wasn't or didn't come out this year. And they did expand out the 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 category. Basically, said that it include it can include DLCs, expansions, blah 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 blah. 
I think then in that case, then a deal, then a DLC probably would not have been nominated this year. Potentially Lake House from from Alloy yeah. Two, but that's kind of like maybe. the only one that I can think of, and maybe Diablo uh, with Vessel of Hatred because that's a yeah. brand new expansion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. I think because of the fact that this, like with Shadow of the Earth Tree, it can be argued that. Yes, while it is a, a DLC and it is expa- an expansion, it does have a, the same amount of content as it would almost with the same amount as the base game. If not, people had already sort of said that it should have been D- Elden Ring 2. Like it was not that much and, of a content. And I totally would have got it if yeah. like, a, like a Miles Morales, they packaged Stand-like. that game in a, yeah. on a disc. Right, but it wasn't yeah, labeled as a cool. DLC. It was packaged as a game. That's a, that's Shadow that's what I'm saying. So, so no, uh, he's uh, just saying no, no. with I'm not trying to, yes, I'm not trying yes. to be able to say that <laughs> that Elden that Shadow of the Earth Tree should have been a sequel. I'm just saying, in regards to the amount of content that we received within Shadow of the Earth Tree, mm-hmm. then yes, I think then a like DLC should, could have, yeah. Could yeah, have yeah, been yeah. could have been not like definitely should be nominated for Game of the Year because it yeah. is enough of a content that people enjoyed <laughs> and played just as much as they did with Elden Ring. Besides, that's beyond the. You have to buy the base game and then the expansion in order to be able to get it. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it just it it is it it, it, it and, and those games would have fallen under the cracks before. Uh, like if it didn't have that, if we go on the other side where if the if that category wasn't expanded, then there would have been a lot lot more speculation, a lot more questioning as to why a Shadow of the Earth Tree wasn't nominated because the people would have said had the same amount of content. Had the same amount of uh, 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 like uh, 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 basically same received the same amount of critical acclaim as the as the original game. I don't like think it would have, anyone think it would have been if, there, if it that conversation would have already been happening. If it wasn't nominated, I don't think anyone would have been like, "But well, where the hell is Elder Ring?" Well, I, I think, think they would, would have, have because I, because I, it would for nominated for nothing. For game of the year, though. I no, not for game of the year just, conversation. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm I saying just not nominated, nominated for. Best ongoing game. Ongoing, yeah. The, no, was, 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 so the, the, the thing is, the thing is, what we're saying is that the DLC, like Packs expansion, all that stuff lot, yeah. for or, for the FAQ, we should clarify is uh, is for all categories, not just game of the year. Yeah, that's what that's what the, that was the provision that they included. It's for all categories. So Shadow oh. of the Earth Tree could have been nominated in any other category, including game of the year. It's just and, and, worth and, about it because. It's it just, is in that category. Well, I'll be honest. I, I don't think it's des- it, it should have been in any. Like, I, I understand that maybe some people would have been upset, but like, you, you sung its praises. A lot of people loved it, but it's a DLC. We're talking about the games, but that it could have been this year. But like, it, we're talking about the titles. Those are the things that need to be focused on. We don't yeah. like. We don't talk about at the Oscars. That, that that episode of television that was really yeah. good. You no, know, but we, we do still. Like, is it? What is the name the, of? What is the name of the award? Game, game of, of the, the year. year. It's game not year. gaming experience of the year. Like yes, game exactly. Of the year. Yeah. So it, it recognizes a game that delivers game. the absolute yes, best experience on the other across side all of exactly. television. Fields, on the yeah. other side of television, you do have new seasons that basically make the the the, the same show be nominated each year. Now, granted, yes. that is kind of the, the format of TV in but, and of itself. But, but it's, I think it, it's it, defined it, in that category, right, Steve? Right. It and is I defined in that category. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I think the game awards have gotten to a place where it's so much bigger now than where these categories were defined when the game awards first started ten years ago. Agreed. That yeah. it's time for a revamping of like what these categories actually mean and an understanding of if there's new categories that need to be made. My thing that I'm gonna add, because so, I think we're all on the same page, like, you know, yeah. it's it sucks that it's gonna take away from these other nominees. Um, yeah. and there's debate here. Where is Chain Together? Like, I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, where is multiplayer Chain? game? I where is, know. <laughs> where is Chain Together in all of this conversation? It shouldn't. Uh, it shouldn't even be under Best Family Game. It should be under Best Breaking Up Your Friends. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like that, when I think of like when Animal Crossing, uh, whatever year that was, because everything's drawn a blank during the pandemic. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, when that was around, that was sweeping category after yeah. category and that was the game everybody was talking about chain together i feel like had that and maybe it's a new category that needs to be made for like that blockbuster hit game or whatever it is but it's a game that came out this year every streamer everybody was playing this game clips were about this game everywhere even outside of gaming culture no one's talking about it at the game awards 
it is pretty wild that that yeah. doesn't even end up under but like, like it just, player game. Yeah, but like it just like from a standpoint of what like industry because it's people who are their juries are from industry and some influencers maybe just none of them really play the game as well, right? But also, um, Kai said from, it. From my so understanding is, is that he, it is uh, movie well, outlets, yeah, for streamer, right? Yeah. <laughs> but then, like, I understand the debate. Like, he is so much more than just your everyday streamer because he has like a whole team and like a huge production that he does and celebrities and everything like that. Maybe there needs to be a creator or another category made for creators of his stature. I, I, I'm but... sorry though, but like almost any, I'm looking at the best content creator of the year. Like, okay. You can make an argument for like someone like Queso. I really love that dude. I think he's super funny. Queso's funny, funny. Yeah, yeah. And it really yeah. is just like he turns on his camera and just is funny. But there are like like typical gamer. I think the VTuber girl, like I, I'm sure that and a lot that. of these creators got full teams behind them. Like, and I will say I, that. Not, that is, he's just as, as, deserving a slot. He brought back every Mike Nickelodeon 100%. show. 100%. Like, yeah. he, he not right. only expanded on his content that he normally does, but he is able to elevate it and basically yeah. make it even better yeah, and evolves. bigger yeah. each every time. Like every and time he streams. And it go exactly every time he streams, it's a hundred percent will like uh, uh, uh like basically just ex like it gets talked about no matter what. And yeah. I would even argue that I would say even like Pirate Software or mm -hmm. Iron Mouse. Like again, mm -hmm. I know Iron Mouse was already previously nominated, but Iron Mouse basically like became the, the largest sub uh, person on Twitch because of their charity. I think it's just the the the, the streamer or the content creator of the year, uh, specifically of even the year speedy. part. Like what have they like? What do these content creators have done over the course of the year to be able to elevate the platform? As each of these like these categories that the rest of the game awards are supposed to basically say, like what games have elevated the art form of gaming this year? Like that is is ultimately what it comes down to for each category. Yeah. Um, and I think that content creator of the year, it kind of is just almost in a sense like who is the most popular and also in what region because there's also like. It kind of uh, the, the also is a lot of good content creators that we don't know about from different regions of the world that also do deserve to be nominated. It's not just a North American thing only. Um, so, but again, I, another category being added, Steve. This category content creator for a streamer content creator who has made an important and positive impact on the community in 2024. Maybe there needs to be a category for up and coming content creator as well. Yeah, I don't know if that would so work then, for... No, I mean, to, I, I agree. Like, I like think two. that was the... So then you could still, like, have people that are competing, right? Like, right. at the same level. That was what Trending Gamer of the Year was. Yeah. Um, yes. and that, like, when it was previously... Mm -hmm. Before it got switched over to Content Creator of the Year. You, that, that was what they originally... What, what that was supposed to be. Is like, what kind of... Like what? Not necessarily up and coming, but it was like what? Who was the trending game uh, gamer uh, or content creator essentially? Um, but it, that that basically they ended it with Greg Miller in 2015. Apparently, um, I don't know. I, I think we always we we're, we're kind of talking about we talked we mentioned about like the game awards kind of is seen as sort of like the Oscars of the uh, of the gaming industry. I would almost argue that technically it's more like the People's Choice Awards. And the, oh, and, and, and the in terms Oscars of what it actually like dice is, awards. in terms of what it actually is, you're you're pretty bang on. I totally yeah. agree. It, yeah. it it plays out more as like a people's choice, right? Or but, like an MTV but, Awards, or like a Nickelodeon. Like it, but it very much Jeff is more Keeley, the popular side of the gaming but, industry. But if you're Jeff Keeley, and if you're if you're from the outside looking in, this is supposed to be our video game oscars right 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 they, they, people want it to be that it is the last show like let's end the year on a bang yes it's got like world premieres and game reveals it's not just all awards so yep. it mixes up a little bit of our world and what we most like out of gaming events as well as you know talking about and acknowledging the achievements of a lot of these developers throughout the year right but at the end of the day, if you want to play into that side of it, if you want to play into the acknowledgement of these developers, if you want to play into their achievements, what they were able to accomplish in the gaming industry in the past year, well, you, you have to do it all in a very legitimate way. Yeah, no, you're good. Um, you have to do it in all a very legitimate way. And I feel like a situation like this with Shadow of the Earth Tree being nominated for Game of the Year amongst a bunch of other categories it makes it seem more as an award show more illegitimate it makes it yeah. seem as though all bets are off mm -hmm. who knows what the rules are mm -hmm. we just nominate who we're going to nominate you know and one thing one thing i want also want to bring up as well is the fact that if something was something as 
Vegas this was gonna change. It was like it wasn't even announced until people caught on to it when it was just added exactly, into the right? website. Right. Yeah. And that, and and that caused, is... so that's a little like like whoa, why'd you why'd you add this in here without making like a grand announcement that is and something I think as that this is there? I think that this is like this is why I say like again like the game awards is kind of more like the people's choice awards versus like dice uh, awards which is yes. more like the video game like the video game Oscars properly. I think that the problem and this is a, not against anything that 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 he's done or what he's done for the industry. I like he's elevated it to to the massive degree. I think the the concern is is at its center is Jeff Keighley himself. The fact that he's the host, he's the producer, he's the, like he is the game awards. He, uh, uh, every other award show ha- doesn't have that. There is an academy. There's uh, a body of, of of judges that are all that are the ones who are, are suggesting these uh, categories and also for nominations. Now, Jeff does say always. He I feel like he always has to clarify this, and it's like this is kind of part of the problem is that he always says he does not have any say over the judging, over the voting, right. blah 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 blah. But the problem is is that he has relationships with these studios. He also receives money from these studios to advertise to get the, to to advertise on his show. It already becomes murky enough when you already have to be when you're taking money from one studio and you're also elevating it the next by by having it as part of a nominate like nominated uh, for an award or for uh, like or potentially could win. If you think about it, look at basically all the games that have been nominated that are in within the Xbox uh, family guaranteed xbox is paying jeff a lot of money so that they can be able to also advertise xbox games and you don't think like it, it's 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 kind then, of at a point not necessarily but it feels a little bit and this is where i think a lot of people have issues with with the, the game awards itself is that it feels a little bit like conflict of interest yeah but then mm-hmm. so steve in your experience in judging for the game awards mm-hmm. have you ever felt like you had to judge the categories or games have been added because of relationships no no i the only the, see- the only difference is that with the accessibility category specifically is that the only thing we're not allowed to do is not is nominate and vote for games so that we worked on what i would argue so wouldn't you say to your point is in that case if it seems like a conflict of interest i don't really care about the, the discourse around that because that's just not the reality, right? Exactly, right. We're, right? Yeah. If we're looking at like what what some guy is going to complain about versus what actually is, I don't think that that's something that I would like put too much stock into. Whereas like what the reality we're facing in front of us right now is, I mean, outside of like speculation as to whether or not this was like a gimme to from software after what happened during the year that Elden Ring won, if we're just looking at the facts in that Shadow of the Earth was nominated for Game of the Year above like an actual game release it's so extremely unfortunate and and that right. is not to discredit the the level of quality in that dlc it's not to discredit from software and the work that they put into that dlc it Correct. really is just more so because i i really would have liked to have seen another game yeah. have that opportunity oh totally and, and, i agree and, and this well. is this is amongst a year of like game of the year nominees where like I don't put a ton of time into all of these right. games, and, right? And like, the fact, and, and the fact is, that, like that we're talking about the like, like yeah. the controversy around Shadow of the Tree. Is this something like a make a gimme from uh, from Jeff to, to the From Software? That's what I'm talking about. Is like it feels kind of like a conflict of interest. Is that right? It, like the fact that that is something that could have come up, it, like it is because of just he's at the center of it all, and it feels yeah. like it's like everything kind of comes through him. Granted, he always like I, like I don't know what he does behind the scenes. Like he could potentially have like very very much like puppet master sort of deal when it comes to a lot of these awards. I have no idea. He claims he doesn't, but I have no idea. But we I don't, don't know, know as well, well right? To, to like, mention to be, that. To be fair, we don't know as well. Like he's exactly, been and that's kind of part of the problem. Looking, no, but I mean, like we don't know. Like he does or doesn't have puppet, but he's also been like you're looking at face value, very clear at like saying that there's judges he's not in charge of judging we've never heard any judges uh openly speak about feeling like they couldn't judge honestly um and it's in its 10th year so you know i I feel like you know what other whatever anyone's debate is with jeff being the face of it which you know i understand um some some of the industry's like complaints about it i think we're just at the 10-year mark of the game awards 
it is time to look at the game awards in these categories and to see how we could update them to make them align with an industry that changes so rapidly yeah um and that has changed so much and i think hopefully next year we start to see new categories or a better definition of what each category means to caboose's point uphold the integrity of like what the game awards really stand Mm -hmm. for for gamers themselves and for the developers that work really hard on these games. I do think that the, uh, what is it? The voting, uh, your choice was player's a voice, the player's, 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 player's yeah. voice. Like that's a cool addition, uh, you know, yeah. uh, to have everyone's voice heard. And I'm curious to see how that goes. Um, but also gamers could be very meme. So we're going to have to see what the community mm-hmm. decides mm-hmm. to go for when they think of the game awards and, and that category specifically. Yeah. I mean, I do think that there is a real world possibility that come time for next year's game awards, there's going to be a redefined game of the year, right? Like there's going to be the, the, the way that it's defined right now and saying recognizing a game that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields. I feel like that definition could be shifted to recognizing a gaming experience yeah. or something like that. Yeah. But, yeah. but I, I hope not. That, I hope I, not. Exactly. I, I, this I, year I, should have been the year being the 10th year. Like, and, this is the yeah. going into a new era. Yeah, but even then, I get, I yeah. don't think that we should have that redefined. I don't think that we should no. start changing I things know. up, right? Like, yeah. it, it should it, be again, a game to recognize a game it, that released that year. It yeah. damages the reputation yeah. of what the Game Awards are supposed to represent for video games, for the, the community of gamers, right? Like, it, it damages sort of the integrity of the show. Even if, you know, for us, we kind of start to see it as like a People's Choice Awards, it really should uphold the same level of integrity and honor that something like an Oscars would. You know, like, do you mean to the point that when the Oscars tried to implement that best blockbuster award or whatever, when there was backlash and people were like, this is not what the Oscars were about, they were like, you guys are right. We're not doing that. You know but what I mean? See, like, that's mm-hmm. wrong because, like, I really do feel like the Oscars, and I'm, you know, we're all film fans, real film junkies. Kabuz, yeah. you and I talked about this a lot, but. I do feel like the problem, this is my issue with the Oscars, is it's gotten to a point where the jury and everyone on it feels so high and mighty, and it's only a certain type of film or a certain type of actor that, that is nominated. Their own category. Blockbusters get their love in the in the fields of something like visual effects. I think something yes, like but the I, but the idea of a blockbuster. A de- idea of a blockbuster is very different than uh, you know a uh, ga- uh, film of the year. Right, it doesn't stand within a lot of the other categories offered in the Oscars, but it and has that's before. why. But there are it, some films that elevate some, the genre. But but a lot of films that are blockbusters, and I understand what you're saying, like something like um, Inception. Like Black Panther was when, nominated for film yeah, of the Black year. Black Panther was nominated, yeah. Yeah. and I there get that. Had, I mean, if you go back to the original, uh, they got, yeah. yeah. If you go back to the original blockbuster, technically, if you think about Star Wars, Jaws, Jaws yeah, they all yeah, got nominated. Yeah. That's yeah. fair. Like That's There fair. are plenty of films that get recognized in these fields. And if there are other films that don't, and the, the, what they do is they just make their money at the box office. Unfortunately, you just there isn't enough room for yeah. everybody to eat That's at the true. table. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Why can't yeah. everyone just win? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So and hard. I think that that's, I think it, when, it, when you break it down to it, kind of like conclude mm-hmm. the, the, this whole thing is that, it, it's it, we are reaching the 10 year anniversary of the game awards so this is the 10th year uh i i would love to have been able to see jeff be able to expand uh, beyond just what the current uh, game awards is because i think if you're not if you're not expanding if you're not sort of iter- iterating then you're not really uh then then it's does it becomes less and less relevant yes and i think in uh uh jeff sh- like we always say this every year like we should he should definitely take a hard look as far as like what the show is and what he wants to produce and also what the game industry is currently at right now he feels it feels very much like he's very either performative or puts his head in the sand a lot of times and i want i like i wish that that would stop and that he would basically like pay attention to the industry instead of just his own thing uh, that's that's with uh, all most respect to Jeff because he produces an amazing show. I can't Certainly. wait. I am looking yeah, forward to the, the show. I'm gonna be it's there. One of my favorite. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be there. there. Yeah, I think it's like it's gonna be my my favorite time of the year. I love it. But I think it's like as we move into the next ten years of the Game Awards, in order for this to continue going forward and get to that second year, ten year mark, it needs to be able to evolve. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
And before we wrap up, I just wanted to say my personal pick for game of the year is Astrobot. I do think though that Final Fantasy VII is going to take it this year. No, it won't because it of won't. all the. I and, think and metaphor is the is metaphor. The I think metaphor, metaphor is, is probably going to yeah. be the winner there. Me- metaphor, all, yeah, the winner it's going to be Elden Ring. Let's be honest here. Astrobot, Astrobot's my my personal as well, and I actually think Black Myth Wukong might might win it. No way. Oh, Black Myth. I think that's it. You that know, we did, a really good job. Yeah, we did a good job last year with our award show, Steve. Steve, I would love to repeat the same thing we did last year. So we'll have our own awards, our own yep. awards show like we did last year. So, so yeah, know. let's. So, yeah. are we going to maybe next episode we go through our picks of like what each category? I think we could be. do that. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah. Let's do Carter, a doc. Guys. Card. Uh, yeah. We could definitely do a doc. Let's yeah, put yeah, together a spreadsheet. Let's <laughs> get a spreadsheet. That's what I did last going. year. We do a spreadsheet. Yeah. There we go. It's official. So is that Camille? What's going on for you for the rest of the week? Um, for the rest of the week, oh, I've been streaming Echoes of Wisdom. I still do not finish the game, guys. I had pneumonia for like three weeks. It oh, felt no. like, oh, um, no. so oh. I'm still recovering, but uh, I'm feeling a lot better now. I just feel congested in the face um, mm-hmm. because I'm seeing Riley. Uh, but no. Uh, <laughs> well, if you ever need some rest, just boot up this trending. You know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right yeah, whatever guys through. whatever but yeah. also the new season um for rainbow six siege came out uh, that was just revealed uh, so nice. that out. yeah youtube oh, uh, please i check am it so out. excited for crossplay really yeah. yeah that's cool Ooh, it's so fun how's that only now coming what the hell that's pretty well for pc that's pc and PC. consoles yeah PC console. because there's anti-cheat because uh they were very particular on like anti-cheat with keyboard and mouse and console players so anyways mm-hmm. yeah. they did it and they're doing it right they are. so um, i'm in yay oh, and no. master chief's in it so that is true they gotta put it in black ops 6 next isn't b2 in it too did i not see that <laughs> maybe <laughs> isn't b2 yeah, in it b2 <laughs> is in it well yeah b2's in it uh undertaker and roman yeah, reigns well, were in it at what one the point. hell oh, yeah. I, everyone's sleeping cool. don't sleep oh, everyone's, on it. everyone's in they're all here Riley, what's going on for you the rest of the week? Black Friday, man. We have a yeah. our flyers out now, yeah. so we have uh, we're going to be the first globally to debut a PlayStation Five Fortnite bundle. Ooh, Ooh. nice! Cobalt so Blue. So we have that coming up. Um, sale starts tomorrow at nine PM Eastern time, which will be wow. Wednesday. So probably the day this comes. Oh out. my gosh, guys! Oh, I'll show you. Guys. I was about to say, were you allowed to say that? I know. Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, it's okay. enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Notice how we're all at twelve, yeah, right? No longer no, you're you're good. To, like, you're delete, good. No. You're to like delay the episode no, until nine PM good. or something. No, you're all no. That it'll officially be available at that time, but we have content okay, around okay. tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, we also have a post up now promoting it, so it's going to be a thing. Awesome. awesome. It's a thing that oh, yeah. is confirmed. And I'm uh, don't forget to pick up your Marvel's Capcom collections physical copies and your comic book this uh, this weekend. This week. There you go. From, from yeah. Walmart. There you Physical go. copies on PS4 and Switch come with the comic, which is pretty exciting. I'm right. Oh, I can't wait. I literally can't I wait. Gotta get it. Gotta get it. Boost. Will it tease a new game? What do you think, Caboose? I don't know. Maybe. I hope so. I better. We, we, <laughs> listen. I hope. I don't know. The, the, the fighting year, collection, the fighting collection even happening was like, we thought it's a dream that was, it would never happen. It yeah. Would yeah. Never in a million years. So I do think that maybe Marvel and Capcom are playing nice again and. Mm-hmm. There's certainly a possibility that way. Seems to be that way. For, 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 yeah. to be that way. And now that Marvel's got Fox, they they don't have to worry about having a completely garbage roster at launch like they did with. Infinite. I would be so curious to see who you would pick for your roster in a hypothetical. New well, I'd have to like, that. Think, I'd have to like really think and, and put it. You in. really you got to get some deep cuts. It would be pretty imp- like cool to see who you pick as a super. Yeah. Fan. Yeah. Not only that, the rebranding of uh, well, like X Men '97, I think strong possibility in a oh, yeah. Capcom game. Oh yeah, so nice. So what nice. so about you, man? What's going on? <laughs> Not much. Playing some more Black Ops Six, but having a lot of fun with that. Um, oh, so add cool. me. Yes, yeah. Let's run some games. Um, and then that's I'll, it. Just playing more uh, Pokemon Blotro? Rocket as well. Blotro? But, but I'm, I'm, I think I gotta get into Blotro. I might have to give it a there shot. We, go. we got him. The hype is about. Best for Canada. Um, and then I'm just counting down the days until the game awards, man. I'm really excited to to see some of you guys there. I'm excited to for all of us to get all dressed up and look nice and just hang out and have a good time. Oh yeah. Um, and that's it. You know, you can check me out on Twitter and Instagram at Caboose EK. I'm also Blue on Sky? that Blue Sky thing at Aaron Caboose. Um, and then yeah, t- t- 
Twitch and uh, YouTube is just Caboose as well. Check me out there. Sick. Uh, Steve. Yeah, uh, so uh, this week, actually, if, uh, I've been kind of doing a lot of uh, recently I've been uh, doing sort of like these daily morning sort of like gaming news shows. Uh, I've been catching them. They're really great. Oh, them out. Thank you. Uh, called, it's called Morning Coffee with Steve, and it basically is a daily show going over gaming news, accessibility news, or just updates about my life. Uh, the one I want to shout out to actually is one that I posted on... Uh, on Tuesday, uh, which was which t- today, uh, as I put it out, but uh, it, the is basically if you want to know more about why the uh, the the games in the accessibility category were nominated and why like uh, and what more about it, so that it's, it sort of feels like okay, what why why did they, like why were they nominated? What what was what pushed what made them push innovation and accessibility forward? Uh, I did a whole breakdown of every single game. Uh, e- e- like, even though I've worked on two of them, I break down pretty much every single one. So I'm not weighing one or the other. Uh, it, it just basically just saying, like, why do they deserve to be in that category? I did a full breakdown. Uh, it's on my YouTube channel, uh, which what? is uh, at Steve Saylor. Um, and uh, yeah, like as far as games, I just literally finished before jumping on the recording for this Lego Horizon Adventures. Nice. I, I had a ton of fun. It's a blast. Uh, and I'm not like I'm not even really. Pay- I'm not even paid to say that. It just it's. I actually did enjoy the game uh, quite a bit. Chill. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm also online co-op for that game. Out of curiosity, I can't remember. Uh, what? I know it's co-op, but is there online co-op? It is. Co- it is online co-op. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay cool. Uh, cool. but also, oh no, sorry, sorry. I think it might be only couch co-op. I don't think it's That's actually co- okay. specifically online. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, I'm also uh, diving in finally to the campaign of Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Uh, I've been streaming that on my, I've been on my Twitch channel. I've been checking that out too. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, I streamed really for like good. nine hours yesterday, uh, and I st- I only got through halfway through the campaign. So I'm trying to be able to, to complete nice. the whole thing on, on stream. Nice. But check out, my, check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Steve Saylor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Steve Saylor pretty much everywhere, uh, including uh, Blue Sky, uh, if you want to follow me there. Uh, yeah. So. Are we all on Blue Sky? I think so, right? Yeah. Thank I think so. I, 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 first of all, I think we need a gaming podcast uh, starter pack with ah. all of us. In there. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. I can bring one up right after, right after this. Uh, I'm hopefully going to be flying in the skies if it allows me. If not, uh, I'll be playing oh, more Dragon Age. Flight Sim? Flight Sim. Yeah, more, what, what are you playing? Uh, Dragon than? Age. Uh, oh, Dragon Age. Age. Ooh, yeah, I, I caught you yesterday. You were streaming that, right? I was, yeah, like 10 hours yesterday. I was hooked. I was, I'm wow. really glad I'm 10 there. hours? Nice. I was on a lot. Yeah. I couldn't Dang. stop. Go, go. I was like, I'm like, I'm just like one more mission, and then like one more mission. I'm like, one more, one more, yeah. one more quest. I could do that. I will you know. say, I've been streaming to you guys. I'm very proud of myself, but yeah. I've been doing like random two o'clock in the morning, twelve o'clock to four o'clock in the morning streams. So you don't, <laughs> wow, don't tune in. Go to sleep. <laughs> My sleep has been wow. messed up. Really 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 bro, don't don't tune in. Don't tune you're in. Like, you're streaming Zelda. Yeah. yeah. Don't tune in though. It's very bad I'll hours. Get some so, sleep. So show up. Okay. So show up. So show up. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Get we'll be there. Right. Set your alarm. Set your alarm. Set your alarm for two a.m. Yeah, at two a.m. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll see you all here uh, next week. Take care, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.